that as well. <laughs> Just looking at repeat again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How about that? Yeah. 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 He's a view, eh? Hi, I'm Danny Glover, and you're watching Joe Berg Today. Firstly, I would like to welcome all of you to Marupim World Heritage Site. Welcome back home. Uh, this is your home, this is our home. We, as humanity, uh, call this place our home. In, in Africa, in, in South Africa. Today we gather here at this rich site of pilgrimage for paleoscientific inquiry and world-class research which seeks to help us to understand our ancestry and the origins of humanity much better than we have ever done before. In the last three years, our teams working here in the Cradle of Humankind region have discovered more individual ancient human relative remains than were discovered in the entire history of the search for human origins on the continent of Africa. Another great discovery revealed. Scientists announced that Homo naledi most likely lived alongside the first modern humans in Africa. They also found Neo, the extremely complete Homo naledi skeleton. About a year and a half ago, the world learned how six petite scientists brought fossils from the Dina Lady chamber in the Rising Star Cave system to the surface. This had been the largest hominin fossil found in Africa, as well as the discovery of a new hominin species, Homo Lady. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you a new species of human ancestor, Homo Naledi. Yesterday, Joburg Today caught up with Professor Lee Berger, leader of the international team of scientists. <laughs> Just looking at repeat again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How about that? Yeah. Yeah. He's a view, eh? This skeleton is, is, is quite beautiful, more complete uh, than the famous Lucy skeleton. It's actually got a skull. And it's actually got the missing face of Homo naledi, something that we didn't have from the Dinaledi chamber, those very, very fragile bones. And so it now can act as our sort of Rosetta Stone, the, the thing that we can compare all of those bits and pieces to, so that we can now understand what the proportions of Naledi were. We can understand perhaps uh, the, the sort of massiveness of males versus females. It's a male, and we named him Neo, which means the gift, not after the, the guy in the Matrix. The entirety of the anatomy of Homo naledi from the Lissetti chamber compared to the Naledi chamber is identical, which in itself is really, really surprising, except we got the nose wrong. We didn't have those very fragile bones of the nose before, and so we kind of had to estimate from what we saw of the skull morphology. And like a lot of people, we thought that the frontal area of, of Naledi was going to be a little bit more advanced, maybe something a little closer to Homo erectus. We now have the face with Neo's face, and we know that's not true. It's actually quite primitive, and it actually looks more like the faces of things like Homo habilis and very primitive members of the genus Homo. So one part of the anatomy that we didn't have, we're guessing at. The rest of it, though, has held in the hypothesis stand. What we have is, for the last million years, scientists and archaeologists, paleoanthropologists, working in Africa have largely worked under the idea that only one species existed at any one time. Once you had large brain humans and our immediate ancestors like Archaic Homo sapiens and Homo erectus, effectively they wiped all the competition out each time a new species would appear. So it was one game. We now know that's not true. We've just discovered a hominid that existed alongside that's actually primitive and survived well into the time where all of that was going on. Did they interbreed with Homo sapiens? We don't have evidence for that yet. We'll try. We're trying to get ancient DNA. The tests have failed so far, but don't give up on that yet because they're within the time window that we're beginning to push ancient DNA back to. If we find that DNA, 
will know the answer to the question, did Homo naledi interbreed with Homo sapiens? I think that this, uh, these discoveries, because there are actually two major discoveries that we're announcing, uh, rank at least equal to the announcement of Homo naledi. I mean, we're telling the world that not only have we found a second chamber with one of the most complete hominid skeletons in it that's ever been discovered, but we now know the age of Homo naledi, and it is strikingly young far younger than any scientist had uh, guessed. The idea that Homo naledi deliberately disposed of its dead in the Dinaledi chamber was a hypothesis based on the elimination of other possibilities. Of course, it was only a single occurrence. Now, we have a second occurrence. We have a second occurrence in another chamber over 100 meters away that is almost identical to the first. It's got Homo naledi in it. They show no signs of scavenging damage, carnivore kills, and other things. So I think, on a personal basis, that adds substantive weight to the idea that Homo naledi was using the rising star cave system in a very interesting way that may have mirrored the kind of behaviors we see in modern humans who deliberately dispose of their dead and go to great lengths to do it. So we use six independent dating techniques to find out the age of Homo naledi. Homo naledi in the Dinaledi chamber, that's the chamber we announced back in 2015, are between 236 and 335,000 years ago. Now that sounds like a long time ago, but it's nothing like what scientists thought Homo naledi would be. They thought Homo naledi would be millions of years old. Based on its anatomy and its morphology, it was thought to be at least a million, but probably more likely two or even two and a half million years old. Well, that may be when the species originated, but it survived all the way down to deposit its dead in this little chamber just yesterday, effectively in archaeological terms. What's important about that date as well is that that coincides when, with when we thought the rise of modern human behavior was occurring in southern Africa. So we're left with kind of two possibilities. Either Homo naledi is the one doing that, or they may have interacted with our immediate direct ancestors. Either of those are really exciting possibilities. Well, I think it's going to have profound effects on the science of archaeology. Uh, now archaeologists have to look at the archaeological record of Africa and be very careful about their interpretations because they now know there at any one time are at least two different candidate species that might be making them. You can't assume it's just, for example, modern humans or Homo erectus. There, there's another candidate out there. That's going to make archaeology very complex for a while. It's going to mean that we have to have extraordinary discoveries to make extraordinary claims about behavior. That's a big deal. The whole archaeological record has to be looked at. It also means we're no longer going to be able to use morphology to date a fossil. We actually have to find those fossils in situ because Homo naledi could have existed for millions of years. And if you'd found it at any one time, you would have, as many scientists did, make the wrong assumption about how old it was. It's not this population wasn't millions of years, but lived into the relatively recent past. From a first person perspective, it's pitch dark. If you turn your light off, you are in complete darkness. You've been in darkness on the torturous journey to get there for about 70 meters. So it's truly, truly black. Once your lights are on, you find yourself in a sort of narrow passageway that's maybe two meters wide at some points, but narrows off into these little alcoves. It's the alcoves on the side that we're finding these bodies of Homo naledi in there. Um, Neo, the skeleton, the partial skeleton we found, he sits back in a tight corner that you have to worm your way into and excavate very carefully. The, one of the babies sits up in a, another corner about uh, 10 or 15 meters away from that position. Another adult is found in another position as if they were around the edges. Now we think the reason they're like that is because we think the center actually washed away sometime in the distant past. It, it's amazing. It is, I guess, the only human term I could use, like work, working in a tomb. But in fact, it's not a human tomb if it is one. Hi, I'm Sophie Ndaba, and you are watching Joburg Today. Like us on Facebook, joburgtoday.tv, and follow us on Twitter at Joburg Today. From the 25th of May onwards, Homo Naledi and Newa will be making even more history at Marupeng. Both the Dinaledi Chamber and the Lisedi Chamber fossil collections will be on display. This will be the largest exhibition of original fossil hominin material in history. So go out there and have a look.